Cryogenic material is routinely moved around laboratories um, and it's often handled using dry ice containers. Uh, people use dry ice containers because dry ice is cold, it's minus 80 degrees centigrade. And people think that that dry ice will protect their samples while they're moving them. One thing that people don't think about, I think, is that that material is 110 degrees warmer than the sample that they're putting in it. And if you combine that with the sublimation of the dry ice, you can often get a warming effect, which is two to three times what you would experience by putting a tube on, just basically on a bench. Um, a thermal equivalent would be to think about putting a hairdryer on top of an ice cube, or dropping the same ice cube into uh, boiling water. The reason that's an issue is that between liquid nitrogen storage temperature and glass transition, we only have 60 degrees and any increase in warming rate can lead to unintended damage to cellular products by a warming event which crosses that thermal barrier. The simple act of handling and moving a cryogenically stored sample introduces the highest potential variability in any part of a storage protocol. So why risk sample integrity and the associated investment by not addressing this issue? Brooks Life Science Systems developed the award-winning cryopod carrier um, for safe and documented transfer and transport of cryopreserved samples from lab to lab, or even throughout a campus. Each cryopod can hold a standard cryobox or several blood cassettes up to 250 mils. Cryopods are charged in under 10 minutes with the filling station and provide four hours of vapor phase storage below minus 150 centigrade. Included with the system are monitoring and alarm features to enable use in regulatory environments. The Cryopod provides the most innovative solution for management of cold chain during sample handling in a laboratory or across a campus.